Designing scalp patches is not easy. There's a lot to consider. Let's talk about it. Hey, Scouter Stan. Let's talk about designing scalp patches. There's a lot to consider when you're putting together a scalp patch. So many things to think about. But before we get into that, I want to personally invite you to our live meeting. Our next one is November 6th. It'll be at 9 p.m. That's on the East Coast. Uh, you can figure out which <laughs> time zone you're in. Uh, but definitely come and visit us and enjoy the live show. We're going to do a review of all the other episodes that have come out recently. And definitely answer your questions. Now, I want to thank all of the patrons and I want to thank all the people who have joined the channel. You are financially supporting this channel and that's great and there's a lot of benefits for each one of you. Like you Patreons know that you get to see the video before everybody else. As soon as it's edited and uploaded, you get notified. See? So, being a member has its privileges. And then of course the gen uh, the the join button that you see on the screen, people have joined that and they too get benefits. They get all kinds of stuff. Uh, they get extra videos. They get all kinds of things. So something to think about as far as helping out on our channel. Now that being the case, let's talk about designing patches. Patches typically do very well if you're doing a series. So if you've been called upon because you're a great artist, you can do drawings rather easily and you have some great ideas that you want to express through an embroidered patch. Now in Britain they often say they're not patches, they're badges. Okay? <laughs> we think of badges differently than they do and you know, so I'm gonna use the word patches because that's what we use in the United States. So with patches, if you do them in a series, um, I did a video recently, recently, this season, uh, I'm going to put the link up there, uh, that particular video talks about all the different designs for Order of the Arrow, and they have an annual theme, and a lot of the patches that are done are done in a theme. Now, there are some requirements that are unique to the patch that you are designing. And there are some that are, like for instance with Order of the Arrow, you have to have certain things within the patch. And we'll talk about how to incorporate that. But the different things to look for, uh, like a council name, the event name, the date, that might be stuff that they want in the patch. And you have to include that with your design. Now down below I'm going to, there's a little thing that says more. You click on that and there's a ton of links in there. In there are the guidelines from the BSA on a lot of the color and how to handle the logo and how that kind of stuff needs to be considered when you're designing your patch. The last thing you want to do is put in your patch and have it come back and have all these different things that you got to put in there somehow. Think about them ahead of time will help design your patch better. Now, as we go through this, I'm going to use a lot of terms that you may not be familiar with if you've never really been in the patch trading stuff. And this is a great information about designing patches that a lot of people that trade patches want to know about. So these kind of kind of go together. So I'm going to put a link up there. That one is about patch trading and they will talk about a little of the terminology and stuff. Now, as you design your patch, you also need to be thinking about where this patch is going to go. Is it going to go in a temporary space on the pocket? Is it something that's meant for a camp blanket? Is it meant for a jacket? You need to think about where this is heading. Uh, that's very important for your design. Now, again, I'm going to use terminology that you may not be familiar with. So, as far as placement on a uniform, check out that video. That'll tell you where everything goes on the regular uniform. There are many types and features within patches that need to be understood in your design. I'm going to put them up there and you'll see uh, what all these different things mean. As you can see up here, this is known as a murrowed edge. 
the murrowed edge is designed uh, to finalize the edge of the patch and it helps keep its shape uh, when it's washed and when it's sewn on. Uh, it also leaves little loops on the back where you can actually sew these on very easily to your shirt. Now the opposite is used in this. This is called hot needle. Hot needle is a way of melting the uh, n um, the threads on the edge leaving a very sharp edge. Uh, it's not really used a lot as far as patches that would be put on a shirt or a jacket or something of that nature. It can, but it often it's very sharp and because of that it's very hard to get a sewing needle to actually attach this. Uh, so because of that these are often used in temporary patches. Now this is a neat feature. Some patches are not fully embroidered. We'll talk about that. But if they're not, they have this backing that's sort of a canvas and they call that twill. The twill backing that's on the on the side that you see, not the back of the patch, but the actual side you see uh, will have this on it. And depending on what direction it's going, this is important for patch collectors. A lot of the old patches didn't have full embroidery, so they they typically would look at that twill to see what direction it was going. If it was going straight up and down, side to side, left to right, you name it. So twill was very the twill direction was very important. Now with full embroidery, the whole patch from edge to edge is covered with stitching. Now it might be a flat stitch or a crow stitch or something of that nature that just leaves a background like a sky or something. That's, that's totally fine. But the entire backing has stitching on it. Um, that's the wonderful thing. None of the twill is coming through like we mentioned before. And because of that, a lot of the embroidery companies will give you anywhere from 8 to 12 different thread colors to use on a fully embroidered patch. Now, if your design goes beyond uh, that standard amount, you might get a small charge for additional threads, but it can be used in a very dramatic way. I have seen patches that had um, cardinals on it, bright red. You would think that's the only thread. No, there's, there's reds and browns and off colors and grays and you name it. It makes the patch really come out. And as a designer, that's what you want to do. Now we get into some of the really unique things. Uh, there is a, a way that you can actually hide things within the patch. Uh, a lot of times it's called ghosting. So you, if you are required to put BSA on the patch and there's no way to incorporate it because all of it is a bird or a fish or something in your design, you could ghost it over an area that uses the same thread. It would just go a different direction. So as you turn the patch, you would actually see uh, this feature. Now, ghosting can go beyond that. You can make the entire patch one color, and you can use different kinds of threads. Uh, currently, I believe that most embroidery companies have available uh, ultraviolet thread, they also have um, glow-in-the-dark thread that can be incorporated. And these are things you can add on to really make a dramatic statement with your design. Now, most embroidery companies will include a loop. Uh, this is a very small charge that they add on this loop. This loop is meant for the temporary button that's actually on the Scout shirt. Um, this, this particular one is actually, uh, you can hang this very easily, even at the event that this is for. You can actually have people wearing them. So uh, that's what this loop uh, is for. Now before they had the loop, they often would just have a buttonhole or a, an actual um, slot that you could move the button through. And uh, this was a lot of times on this particular type. Uh, this is older. Uh, it's not meant for un the buttons under the pocket flap. It's meant for the buttons that went through the pocket. 
uh, that actually hanged on the outside. This went over that button. Um, so it was a different way of doing it. It'd be nice to see those come back. <laughs> okay, I don't know if the embroidery companies may have a problem with that, but this is something that might you might incorporate within your design. Now, finally, we need to think about the back of the patch. In the past, a lot of patch collectors paid a lot of attention to this because there was reproductions of patches, famous patches, that were coming out. Now, a lot of patches were put on felt, and this felt often had a cloth backing. This allowed the stitching to go through and to hold up better on the uniform. Later on, this cloth uh, was basically a gauze-looking material. It's very wide, open areas. It often had a glue or some kind of paste on it, and that was what they would sew the patch onto. Now, some embroidery companies replace this with a film or a plastic or a paste. They actually used paste in some of these, like you see in the example. Um, that is very common on the back of very old patches. Now, today, we use a standard plastic uh, material that's on the back of the patch. This helps hold the shape of the stitching that's in the patch. Uh, this was often a combination. Now, sometimes they didn't even have a, uh, a canvas material that they were sewing into. They literally were sewing directly into a material that would be left on the back, like a plastic material. Even today, we have that same plastic, but a lot of times you will see the supply division has actually got its logo uh, all over the back. It's just repeated on the back. And sometimes, depending on the people who make the patch, they will even identify the patch or put a hologram sticker on the back of the patch. Now, depending on the uh, people that are making the patch, will depend on all of those different features, but it's something to keep in mind while you're designing the patch. Now, when it comes down to it, the patch, once it's designed, it's just the, the patch itself, the, the design, the drawing of it on a piece of paper, it can be cardstock even, uh, that needs to be put together with little lines that come out from it explaining each of the different features of the patch. This will help the embroidery company reconstruct that design. So when they reconstruct that, uh, they will be sending back a proof. It's usually electronic, uh, but that proof will actually have your design put on it. And uh, that proof is what you refer to uh, to make sure that they've got the, the design the way you want it. Now, there's two other things that come into the designing of a patch that, that a lot of people don't think about. When you look at a patch, it's going to be loomed. It literally is going to be done repeatedly on a machine, okay? They charge for the rectangle or square. So if you have a round patch that's three inches, they're going to charge you for three by three, okay? <laughs> that's, they're going to square it off. Even the space that you're not using, you'll end up paying for. So if you have just a crescent, all of the stuff that's not used, that you, you're going to have to pay for that. That's why, that's why those little knots are, and, and badges are so expensive, that it takes up a lot of materials to do that type of embroidery. So keep that in mind when you're making your design. At one time, when I was an advisor, I was stunned by a patch that we put together that had a shark bite taken out of it. Literally, patch was missing, okay? <laughs> it was a combination, but we had to pay for the whole patch, even the stuff that wasn't there uh, in the final patch. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. It's a neat feature, it's, it's different, but you end up paying for it, it, it ends up being part of your cost. Now, a lot of times, the minimum run on most patches is 200. Uh, the maximum depends on your embroidery company. Now, I, I hope that this has been 
kind of an enlightening video about patch design, uh, patch construction, and all the different features that are on patches. Um, so that's something that a lot of patch collectors may or may not know. And this kind of completes that knowledge of designing a patch. There's all kinds of patches out there. And I know that you have something that you want to put together for your troop or your district. That's something that it, a lot of leaders are called upon to do. And the youth should be taking that. And this video is meant just to give you an overview of all the different facets and things that need to be considered when doing a design. Uh, it's critical that those things are met. Uh, you want to make sure your colors are right. You want to make sure your logos are right. You make sure that all of your branding is correct. Uh, make sure that it's authorized by the district or the council or even the national. So there's there are there occasions. It is very important that your design be completely unique. Okay, we do not need. The world does not need more of somebody else's patch, okay? <laughs> Let's be trustworthy and do your own artwork, do your own ideas, okay? A lot of times, scouts can get into a lot of trouble by using copywritten materials, okay? So you need to have those things taken care of. If it's part of your theme, if it's part of what you do, if that's part of what you're going to put on the patch, you need to get written permission from the lawyers of who owns it, okay? <laughs> so you can get in some serious trouble. So definitely go for the something that's unique, something that's different. That's the key to making a great patch. And you do great work. Oh my gosh, you're probably mentoring scouts um, and helping them achieve great things. It is an awesome thing that a youth can say, I designed that patch. I did that. That's something that will last. So that's, that's a very lasting thing. And as we mentor, as we coach, as we help our youth succeed, I'm, I want you to know that I'm very proud of you. And I want you to keep up the hard work our scouts need you. They need your help. And I am so glad that you're sticking with it and in there and doing that hard work. Thank you so much. And I will see you on the trail.